Let's go ahead and replace our front steering knuckle. It is located behind each front wheel, behind your brake rotor, attached to your upper control arm and lower control arm. The process is the same for both sides. Using a 22 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and remove our lug nuts. Let's go ahead and remove our wheel and set it aside. I'm going to start by removing our upper cotter pin here on the lower portion of our ball joint. Use a pry tool. You can try using a pair of cutting dikes and use them as leverage. So you grab the cotter pin and just pry it out. Now this is not a stock ball joint here. So I'm gonna try a couple tools here with our pliers and our pry tool. Pop that out. Let's go ahead and loosen this nut. 21 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and loosen our nut here. Now we're not going to remove this. We wanna go ahead and loosen it. When we release the upper control arm from the knuckle, it'll kind of pop up a little bit here. So we want to keep the nut on here and use it as a capture nut. So you spin this off till half the threads of the upper ball joint are still in the nut. You put your pinky between there so you have a general idea how much thread you have available. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our hammer and we're going to strike this part of our knuckle. This should release our upper ball joint from the knuckle and our nut will be used as a capture nut and stop this when this pops apart. Let's give this a few good whacks. You can see that it's now separated. We're gonna go ahead and use our jack underneath, support our suspension here. Maybe put a strap on this to hold it as well and then we'll go ahead and loosen this nut the rest of the way and remove it. Now I'm gonna use a strap here. What we wanna do is anchor our knuckle here inboard because once we separate this here it's going to want to pull out board and we don't want to put any extra tension on our flex hose here for our brakes our abs or our cv axle so we're going to go ahead and attach this now it's going to pop it into a frame port right there and over here and that'll keep that knuckle inboard let's go ahead and remove this upper nut here Using a 21 millimeter socket and our breaker bar, we wanna remove our brake caliper and bracket from our knuckle. There's a bolt up on the top here, and then there's a bolt on the bottom. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove those. Once those are loose, we'll switch over to our ratchet. You may get to a point where you can go ahead and finish taking those bolts out by hand. If not, just use your ratchet to continue and zip those out. Now two things you wanna pay attention to, once you remove this bolt, you're gonna have the brake caliper and bracket with the brake pads. It is a heavy, awkward component to work with. So you wanna be careful and be prepared to handle the weight of that. As well as when you remove this, the brake rotor will be floating. You don't want that to fall off and hit your foot or anything like that. So be prepared for that as well. Now when we remove this, we wanna go ahead and lift this up and support it. We're either gonna use a hook or we're going to use some sort of strap to secure it to the suspension or the frame up top. 
So let's go ahead and do that. What we're gonna wanna do as well as wanna go ahead and pop off our clip on the back side here holding our ABS. So we're just gonna use our pry tool here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that off. Use a pry tool or a trim tool. And we're gonna just pop this off of the knuckle itself. That'll give us a little more flexibility. Go ahead and grab your brake rotor, remove that, and set it aside. Using a 35 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove our axle nut. Using a 21 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and loosen our outer tie rod end nut. Remove that and go ahead and pop your tie rod end out. So we're just going to take our ABS wire here. I'm going to follow this up. We're going to disconnect our ABS wire from our clips and right up behind the fender well liner here, there's going to be another connector. We're going to pop this off of the wheel well liner here. We're going to disconnect that and we're going to remove our whole knuckle. I'm going to use a trim tool and I'm going to go up behind the liner here and we're going to pop these two little buttons holding our connector up there. And then we have one more right here. Pull that through. That'll expose our ABS connector right here. So you wanna pull up on this tab, which ours was already released, not sure why, but pull up on this little red tab. And then press down and we'll separate our connector Let's go ahead and start by removing our lower cotter pin. Once we get that out, we're going to go ahead and loosen and remove our lower ball joint nut. Using a 27 millimeter socket, we're going to get loosen and remove our ball joint nut here. Now you want to be careful because at this point here, there's nothing else holding your knuckle in place besides the knuckle being wedged onto your lower ball joint. So I'm going to keep this nut on here as a capture nut. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to strike the knuckle here to release that. Now that this is popped, you can see there's no more gap here. Now at this point, once you remove this nut, the whole knuckle is gonna drop down out of the place and you have your CV axle that is through the hub itself. So you wanna loosen this, remove it, but you wanna be able to capture this unit. On the back side of our knuckle, there's gonna be three 19 millimeter bolts that go through and hold our wheel hub in place. I wanna go ahead and loosen and remove all three. Ah. 
this point here, now that we have all three loose, I'm going to go ahead and thread these in just a few threads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hammer and I'm going to strike these here. And in turn, what is going to happen here, are these bolts are going to work our wheel hub out of our knuckle. We have some play in our backing plate. You can tell that the hub is starting to come out. Let's go ahead and remove our bolts. Take your backing plate. Now before installing everything here, I'm gonna make sure you have a nice clean surface. I'm gonna put some anti-seize compound. Around here. Just a thin, thin coat. It doesn't have to be big globs of it. Take your backing plate, line that up. You want to make sure that your notch for your ABS wire goes right behind the knuckle arm itself. Put some anti-seize compound on the inside face of the hub or the knuckle itself. Once you have everything lined up like that, flip it over. Line up our bolt holes here. I'm gonna put some anti-seize compound on our bolts. And drop those in. And let's go ahead and get those all started by hand. Once we have all those started, let's go ahead and snug those down. Let's go ahead and torque these down to 134 foot-pounds. Let's go ahead and install our knuckle and hub. We're going to go ahead and install our lower ball joint as well as our CV axle. Right, once you 
once you have the threads come through for your lower ball joint, go ahead and get that nut started. Lift up, have an axle coming through. Let's go ahead and get our upper control arm dropped down and into place. We can go ahead and get our upper nut installed. bring our ABS wire around the back side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just push our button for our ABS wire into the back side of our knuckle to hold that in place. And just drape that up over there for now. I'm gonna use our 22 millimeter socket. I'm gonna tighten down our upper ball joint nut here. Install our outer tie rod end. I'm just going to get the nut started on there for now. Let's go ahead and torque our upper ball joint to 40 foot pounds. Torque our lower ball joint nut to 40 foot pounds. Now at this point here, we do have a hole for a cotter pin that we had removed. You wanna go ahead and make sure that the notch in the castle nut lines up with the hole in the ball joint. So you can go ahead and put our cotter pin in. If it doesn't line up, continue to tighten the nut until the notch in the nut lines up with the hole in the ball joint. So here's our hole. I'm gonna go ahead and line up our cotter pin. that will lock in a place like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-seize compound around the hub and our nut area here. Install our axle nut. Let's go ahead and tighten that down. At this point here, we're gonna go ahead and thread on a couple of our wheel nuts. Use a pry bar on our lug nuts here to keep that wheel from rotating. And we're gonna to torque the spindle nut to 185 foot-pounds. Once that's torqued, go ahead and remove your lug nuts. Grab your brake rotor. Set that on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use some solvent on our brake rotor. I wanna make sure that this is clean and there was no dirt or anything getting on the rotor itself from when we had it off. And see, we got some dirt on here. Now that we have a rotor on, let's go ahead and install our brake caliper and bracket. At this point here, I'm gonna push our rotor on. I'm gonna slide our brake pads, caliper bracket, and caliper onto our knuckle. Let's go ahead and get our upper bolt started. Once we have the upper bolt started, a couple threads, should be able to go ahead and get our lower one lined up. Go ahead and snug those down. Snug that down, and we'll do the same for the bottom bolt. Go 
go ahead and torque our caliper bracket bolts to 130 foot-pounds. Go ahead and connect our ABS wire here. Snap that into place. Once that's clipped in, press our red lock in. Then we can run this up top and press our push pins back into our fender liner. our plastic push pin right here and our upper control arm. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten our outer tie rod end nut. We're gonna tighten this to 22 foot pounds and then an additional 90 degrees. Now at this point, let's match up the hole in our ball joint stud to the notch in our castle nut and install our cotter pin. Install our cotter pin. I'm gonna feed this through and it comes through the other side here. Let's go ahead and bend this over. I'm gonna tap this up into place. Then we're just gonna snip off the excess. Let's go install your whip. Let's get a lug nut started. Let's go ahead and snug these lug nuts down. Get torque down our lug nuts to 130 foot pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.